Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, regarding this Floyd Mayweather, Marcus Maidana fight, Two world-class fighters, one in the Hall of Fame, the other should be, have both come out and have both expressed their opinion that Marcus Maidana won the fight. From the earlier post-fight video I made here online, you know how I saw it. I thought Mayweather won this fight by several rounds, as did some other pundits, people like Teddy Atlas. But understand there is the view out there that Maidana won the fight. Let's talk about both of these elite fighters and uh, whether or not we should take their comments seriously. The first is Oscar De La Hoya. De La Hoya in an interview after the fight said that Floyd was not 46-0, he was 43-3. The three losses being the first Castillo fight Floyd's fight against Oscar De La Hoya himself, which Floyd officially won by split decision. And, of course, his fight against Marcus Maidana. Now, let me say this. In my opinion, the Castillo fight was closer than the Marcus Maidana fight. If you're looking for a fight in which Floyd gets tested to the point where there's an argument that can be made on whether he actually won the fight. And I would encourage people to listen to the comments of HBO while that fight is going on. Then the Castillo fight is the fight to look at. Right? I personally feel Floyd won that fight too. But I'll agree Floyd wasn't the fighter then inside that he is now. Right, Floyd has lifted his game since that first Castillo fight. Let me say this with regard to the Oscar fight. And I happened to be in Vegas when that fight took place. I was at the MGM Sportsbook. And people started streaming into the Sportsbook right after that fight took place. Claiming that Floyd had gotten a gift. Right, The crowd was overwhelmingly a De La Hoya crowd. People need to remember that De La Hoya was the A-side going into that fight, right? De La Hoya was the cash cow of boxing at the time. Floyd was the opponent in that match, right? De La Hoya was the more loved fighter. But let me say I've seen that fight several times. I see Floyd completely neutralizing De La Hoya's left hand, which was all De La Hoya had, quite frankly. Right? When De La Hoya comes inside, he tries, to, he tries to throw volume. I didn't think he was successful. I don't consider the Floyd De La Hoya fight to be as close as the first Floyd Castillo fight. Let me point out, there is a second Floyd Castillo fight, and Floyd clearly wins that second fight. Right? I believe he clearly wins both fights, but let's just say the controversy surrounds the first fight. Then, of course, there's this Maidana fight. Now, people need to understand, as they hear Oscar De La Hoya's comments, that De La Hoya has picked against Floyd in several fights and has been proven not only wrong, but wrong by a wide margin in several fights. Right? Keep in mind, De La Hoya picked Canelo to beat Floyd. Right, that fight, at least on my scorecard, was a near shutout in Floyd's favor. Right, Oscar seems to have some, I don't know, uh, strained feelings toward Floyd Mayweather. Let's remember, Oscar wanted a rematch that never happened between the two men. Right, keep in mind too that Oscar right now is in the middle of a feud with Richard Schaefer in his own company, Golden Boy. Right? The two men, according to reports, 
aren't on the best of terms. Well, understand Floyd Mayweather has said in interviews that Richard Schaefer is like a member of his family and that if Richard Schaefer leaves Golden Boy, Floyd leaves Golden Boy. Right? So there are, let's say, uh, complicated business matters that, in my opinion, might be influencing Oscar's point of view on this fight. Keep in mind, too, if, in fact, Golden Boy does explode, if there is a split between Schaefer and De La Hoya that becomes a reality, then Oscar would want to keep fighters like Marcus Maidana and, for that matter, Saul Alvarez in the Golden Boy family, right, with his company. So... Oscar is not a disinterested third party. Oscar is very much an interested participant in what happens with Marcus Maidana's future. I believe Oscar knows that if he splits with Schaefer, Floyd will go with Schaefer. So Oscar's comments on a fight involving Mayweather and Marcus Maidana might be slanted toward Oscar's own future business interests. Right, let me also say this too. Since Oscar's being so candid in claiming that there are fights that Floyd was credited with winning that he actually lost, I'd like to see the same level of candor from Oscar in talking about his own career. Right, I'd like to know who Oscar thinks really won his fight against Felix Sturm. Understand Sturm, who has been a middleweight champion multiple times, right? Repeatedly, in interview after interview, regardless of who he beats, right? Most recently, Darren Barker. Even after that fight, when they say, what, you know, <laughs> give us your best fight. The best fight of your career. Sturm always says, my fight against Oscar De La Hoya. Right? Because Sturm knows. I believe hardcore boxing fans know that he beat Oscar that night. This was the fight right before Oscar fought Bernard Hopkins in a lucrative matchup. Right? Oscar had to beat Sturm to fight Hopkins. A lot of people stood to make money, promoters, etc. If that happened, I'd like to hear Oscar explain what did happen that night. I thought Sturm won that fight. Also, a fight that still gets my go. One of the best defensive performances I've ever seen was the Oscar De La Hoya Pernell Whitaker fight. Right? Let me just say if defense matters on the scorecards, I believe Pernell Whitaker won that fight. Whitaker was so outraged at the decision. And keep in mind, there are times in that fight where Whitaker's doing whatever he wanted defensively. Whitaker was so outraged that after that fight, Whitaker on his own dime paid for a page on the LA Times, Oscar's home paper, saying I was robbed basically. Oscar, let's do this again. I'd like to know how Oscar scored that fight. If you want to see a left-handed fighter have a very hard time out of an orthodox stance trying to land that left hand against the southpaw. If you want to see a guy ducking under punches, having the other guy miss while standing right in front of him, I would encourage you to look at that fight footage. So I take Oscar's opinion on a Madonna floyd fight with a grain of salt. Right, I think Oscar, quite frankly, is slanting his public statements to fit his long-term business interests. No doubt he wants to make Marcus Maidana as happy as possible. The interview, though, that does rivet me, it fascinates me, is a great fighter. I believe he's better than Oscar De La Hoya was on his best day because, of course, this guy's two-handed. The great Roberto Duran, in an interview, has said that he feels Marcus Maidana won the fight. Right, he goes further and says that Maidana foolishly did not go to the body 
tried to hit Floyd in the head, which was a mistake. He goes even further. And he says that Maidana, the tough guy that he is, right, doesn't know how to cut off the ring. Now, many of the newer generation who watch my videos don't know who Roberto Duran is. Simply put, he ruled the lightweight division in the 1970s. Right? He simply is one of the best lightweights in the sports history. Right? Understand the Associated Press named him the best lightweight ever. Right? That was a few years ago. He got the title in 72. He finally left the lightweight division in 79. He had a multi-year run of dominance. There are few people in the sport, if anybody, who fought better inside than Roberto Duran. Understand, for children like me of the 1980s, by the time we see Duran in the 80s, he's almost like Bernard Hopkins. He's already put together a resume that made him a legend at lightweight. So by the time he's fighting Ray Leonard in the 80s, I would argue he was already a boxing Hall of Famer, right? It's like Hopkins, whatever Hopkins does at light heavyweight, understand Hopkins is one of the dominant middleweight champions of all time. Roberto Duran, whatever happened the rest of his career, after he leaves lightweight, was one of the dominant lightweight champions of all time right his nickname was hands of stone he got 69 KOs he was a knockout puncher well let's talk about what happens after he leaves the lightweight division he fights an unbeaten Sugar Ray Leonard in the town where Leonard had picked up his gold medal in Montreal, right? Leonard was a gold medalist from the 76 Olympics. And it's Roberto Duran who takes Leonard's title, right? Duran literally bullies Leonard over to the ropes, slows down Ray. If you want to see what Marcus Maidana should have done, put on the Roberto Duran Ray Leonard first fight. It's a classic. Right? Then, of course, you have the no mouse fight. So what does Duran in his second career do? Keep in mind, he's already been a dominant lightweight champion. He beats Leonard for the welterweight champion. He loses it in the no mouse fight. Let me point out that the scoring of that no mouse fight is closer than you think before Duran quits. Then he wins the light middleweight championship against Davey Moore. Then, people forget this, in the late 80s, after Hagler retires, after the Leonard Hagler fight, and both guys move on, Duran actually picks up the middleweight title against Duran Barkley. Right, so this is an elite fighter. The only guy he lost to when he was ruling the roost was Yvonne de Jesus. He fights him a couple more times after that, at least a couple more times, knocks him out in both fights, right? So this is a guy who, quite frankly, should be listened to when he talks. Now, I disagree with him here, right? I don't see how Madonna could have been awarded this fight. But where I do agree with him, and you'll see this in my pre-fight video, is that if Madonna was going to win this fight, Madonna needed to go to Floyd's body. Right? I was arguing that Madonna should have hidden his real punches early. Right? Should have hidden the angles of his unorthodox shots. And should have come in and gone to the body on Floyd Mayweather. Then later, after he banked some body shots. After he tired Floyd out a little bit. Then he could unveil his unorthodox punches. He didn't do that. 
he came in and tried to throw the kitchen sink at Floyd. And he did it so sloppily, even Duran is noting, that it didn't look like he could cut off the ring. Now, let me just point out, for those of you who might watch the fight this weekend, I understand it's about to be televised. Understand there is spectacular body work being done in the Mayweather-Maydana fight. Spectacular body work. It's being done by Floyd Mayweather. Okay, as you watch the film, look at the body work. It's Mayweather doing the body work. Let me add a caveat to Duran's complaint about Maidana not cutting off the ring. People need to realize that Floyd wanted to be on the ropes. This isn't the first Floyd fight where he's over by the ropes. If you know what you're doing, what's the harm in being over by the ropes? Right? Floyd's over by the ropes. Maidana's in front of him, unlike Adrian Broner. Floyd leans forward. Right? Maidana's high shot, where he's throwing his hand up here and trying to come down, can't get leverage. In fact, it's flying over Floyd's head. Floyd puts himself on Maidana. There's no need to cut off the ring when the guy you're fighting wants to be on the ropes. That's like trying to cut off the ring on Ali when he's trying to rope-a-dope you. Right? So what I want people to do as they see Floyd on the ropes is ask themselves, especially since you're hearing from a great fighter like Roberto Duran, that Maidana is not doing a great job cutting off the ring. Right? Ask yourself, what is Floyd doing up on the ropes? When you see Maidana throw a lot of punches when he has Floyd up on the ropes, ask yourself the next question. How many of these punches are landing? Right? If Floyd is up on the ropes and he's smothering Maidana's punches and Maidana's not landing on him, folks, that's mastery. That's not losing, especially when the rest of the round has Floyd in the middle of the ring going to town on Maidana's body, right? Floyd is throwing left jabs to Maidana's body with regularity. Let's just say Maidana isn't a defensive wizard. He's not covering up the body shots. Understand too, you can be a big puncher and not be that big in your trunk. Isn't that the problem really with Sugar Ray Robinson historically? Right? Big puncher. Doesn't mean you're strong underneath. Amir Khan dropped Maidana off of a body shot. Let's also address some other points of uh, Duran's comments. And I'm just mentioning them because you should read the interview. It's on Boxing Scene. It's short. But of course Duran complains that in the rematch Mayweather will run. Right? You know what? Who else would make this complaint? But a guy who muscles up on Ray Leonard the first fight, then in the second fight can't catch up to Ray Leonard. Right? Understand? Duran is seeing things from the perspective of a guy who didn't have blinding foot speed. Let me just point out though, Duran's so skilled that when he picks up the middleweight title, in 1989's Ring Magazine Fight of the Year against Saran Barkley, you're going to notice he's the one doing a lot of the moving in that fight. But, of course, a body puncher like Duran, who beat Ray Leonard from the inside out, is going to bemoan the fact that if a rematch between Mayweather and Maidana takes place, Mayweather's going to be moving. There's nothing wrong with moving. Right? Nothing wrong at all. Guys with slower foot speed tend to accuse the other guy of running. Right? 
There's nothing wrong with lateral movement. Play to your strengths. If you have great legs in the ring, why not use them as part of your strategy to win the fight? Anyway, people uh, looking at commentary or looking for commentary on the Maidana uh, Mayweather fight should consider Roberto Duran's comments. Right? And if you don't know who Roberto Duran is, let me encourage you to Google him. He was a great fighter. Understand. He's the only man in a title match to last all 15 rounds against Marvin Hagler. Understand Hagler by his own admission early in his fight against Roberto Duran was baffled. Didn't know how to handle Duran. Look up that interview. Had to go to his corner and ask for advice. Right? This is mid-fight. And keep in mind, this is against a guy who really was a lightweight having a second career after dominating his division for most of the decade. Right? Take a hard look at Roberto Duran's comments. Take a hard look at Roberto Duran. Simply put, he's a great fighter with a strong opinion on the mayweather Maidana fight that hardcore fans need to know about. Let me hear from you if there are any other great fighters out there with strong opinions on this fight. If you've stumbled on an interview of, let's say, Lennox Lewis, uh, Vitaly Klitschko, right, Larry Holmes, you know, Thomas the Hitman Herms, Hagler, right? If, if there are other noteworthy takes on Mayweather Maidana, please, I hope you share them with all of us in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.